awesome. That you can feel extra excitement in the air because Eddie Murphy is here tonight. Which is very exciting. He's here to talk about his new comedy, You People, which is very funny. Eddie plays the father of a black woman who's getting married to a white man, and the reviews are excellent. Tucker Carlson called it the scariest movie I've ever seen. <laughs> Speaking of scary, did anybody feel that earthquake we had this morning? We had 2 a.m. Guillermo, did you feel it? Not at all, Jimmy. I didn't, I didn't. Yeah, I was so like, Tequila works, doesn't yeah, it? I work all the time. <laughs> it was a 4.2 off the coast of Malibu, and it was coupled with an annual reminder of our impending doom. You know, in Washington, they have this group of atomic scientists who uh, gather to update what they call the doomsday clock. This is a metaphorical measure of how close we are getting to the end of the human race. And I'll tell you what, these guys, they, one thing they really know how to put on a show. We move the clock forward the closest it has ever been to midnight. It is now 90 seconds to midnight. It's like they died already or something. <laughs> And, and by the way, the Doomsday Clock, first of all, looks like they bought it at Party City. And second, <laughs> if they want to get people's attention, you need to spice this presentation up like this. It is now 90 seconds to midnight. We're all going to die! We're doomed! Doomed, I say! Doomed! How are you so calm? Don't for your life! how you let the planet know at 90 seconds we're basically one microwave potato away from extinction. <laughs> In other doomsday news, Donald Trump is going to be back on Facebook and Instagram soon. Meta today announced that they are going to reinstate both of his accounts in the coming weeks. Uh, the president of Meta Global Affairs said Trump's accounts will come with new guardrails in place to deter repeat offenses. Oh, I know, those will work. I'm sure this time he'll be very well behaved. Ever since he commanded an army of dim-witted goons to overthrow the government, he's shown a lot of restraint. He's almost a Zen master now. Sadly for Trump, the reprieve has come too late for a big announcement he made on Truth Social. Bagra Vance wrote, a, a great honor to have won the senior club championship at Trump International Golf Club, competed against many fine golfers, and was hitting the ball long and straight. The reason that I announced this on Fabulous Truth is that in a very real way, it serves as a physical exam, only much tougher. You need strength and stamina to win. I, I have strength and stamina, most others don't. You also need strength and stamina to govern. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and I'll tell you, if this isn't the picture of stamina and strength, I, you know, for when I first looked at it, I thought it was The Rock. The only problem with this win is Fatty Shack didn't exactly play fair. He missed the whole first day of the tournament because he was in North Carolina paying tribute to himself at a memorial for his superfan Diamond of Diamond and Silk. But he told the organizers of the tournament, he said, I played a strong round two days before the tournament. And he decided that would count as his Saturday score. So he started the tournament with a five-stroke lead, which is like... <laughs> Showing up at mile six and claiming you won the marathon. Even Kim Jong-un was like, yeah, right, bro. I mean, <laughs> meanwhile, this Mike Pence classified documents thing is really throwing Republicans for a loop. They're, you know, they're running around in circles trying to claim that what Biden did is worse than what Mike Pence did. Here's Ted Cruz on the uh, documents they found at Joe Biden's house. I believe the FBI needs to search the residences of Hunter Biden and any business offices of Hunter Biden. And here's his take on the documents as they pertain to Mike Pence. Oh, look, the, the Mike Pence story, it's still early. Uh, you know, Mike Pence, and as you noted, he, he is a good friend, he's a good man. He's explained where these came from. That was a mistake, but there's no reason uh, to think it was anything but inadvertent. Right, even though they're exactly the same thing, they're not the same thing. Mike Pence is a good friend. Mike Pence was like, um, he's not my friend. I don't, 
barely know that guy. And then we have the new face of the GOP, George Santos, who's now admitted to the Federal Election Commission that a $500,000 personal loan he claimed to have made to his campaign didn't actually come from him. Of course that money didn't come from him. Two years ago, the guy reported his income was $55,000 a year. The only way somebody like George Santos comes into $500,000 is if he intentionally slips on varnish he spilled so he could sue Home Depot, okay? <laughs> So now the big question is, why did he amend his paperwork, and who gave him all that money? Why did you no, amend your FEC that. report to say $500,000? Let's, let's, let's make it very clear. I don't amend anything. I don't touch any of my FEC stuff. Yeah, but, right? So don't be disingenuous in the report that I did, because you know that every campaign hires fiduciary. So I'm not aware of that answer, and we'll have an answer for the press regarding the amendments in yesterday. But, but where, where was the, what was the source of your funds, sir? What was the source of that money, sir? Why can't you divulge this? So why can't you divulge the source of the money? Congressman Santos, yeah, what, what, what can you say about the source of that money? Huh? Come on, give the guy a break. Don't you know he went deaf in the Korean War? <laughs> I don't know, maybe he got the money. Maybe he lost like half a million teeth and got the money from the tooth fairy. You don't know. <laughs> We've been goofing on George Santos a lot, and rightly so, I think, but some people have a, a different way of looking at this, including uh, one of our writers, Louis Vertel, who is with us right now to Vertel it like it is. Louis? The term gay icon gets thrown around a lot, and it's not limited to Madonna or Diana Ross or Snap, Crackle, and Pop. <laughs> who have been having a threesome in your breakfast since 1933. <laughs> there are many gay icons, but we need more. In order to thrive as gays, we need to grow our brand. And so I would like to nominate a new gay icon, George Santos. <laughs> this bumble little goblin boy <laughs> who dresses like a three-year-old millionaire <laughs> is a star. I'd tell you more about him, except everything I know right now is a lie. His high school, his college education, his job history, his glasses, those aren't prescription. You know this bitch can see. And yet, I'm intrigued. When you go through a list of the great liars in history, Benedict Arnold, Richard Nixon, Bernie Madoff, Felicity Huffman, the vast majority have been straight, and that's not inclusive. We all lie. Lying is built into the gay experience. As a teenager, I told people I admired Ryan Phillippe because of his performance in Gosford Park. <laughs> what I meant was, Ryan Phillippe's abs and I know what you did last summer made me wish I was the thing he did last summer. <laughs> Here's George Santos in drag. What? is that on his head. <laughs> That's a wig you buy to evade police. <laughs> they say he went by the name Kitara Ravash, which in Portuguese means slutty Power Rangers villain. <laughs> He's also a trailblazer, literally. Here he is blazing a trail past reporters <laughs> with the help of, I believe, a cast member from Glee. And his lies are so shockingly blatant. I mean, what kind of a psychotic banana brain would claim to have appeared on Hannah Montana and the sweet life of Zach and Cody? <laughs> it's so brazen, you almost have to admire it. So I applaud George Santos or Anthony DeVolder or Katara Ravash, whatever his name is, for breaking out of the Neil Patrick Harris, Pete Buttigieg, gay goody two-shoes mold. <laughs> Not all gay people are good. Some of us, are awful. <laughs> Remember this sneaky little queen? <laughs> I just hope that when George Santos finally gets kicked out of the House of Representatives, he gets a shot at another house, the Celebrity Big Brother house. <laughs> where I can watch this sociopath 24 hours a day. <laughs> so here's to you, George Santos. Like all the great queer heroes, your balls are freakishly big, your ego is off the charts, and your mascara looks like a hate crime by Maybelline. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you. It's Lewis
never tell everybody. Thank you, Lewis, and, um, and apologies to the Redenbacher family. <laughs> Uh, you know, we've been doing this show for, uh, it's tw our 20th anniversary. Uh, and every night this week, we've been digging through our history to show how we got here. Now, this was the very first thing we shot. This never appeared on our show. We shot it for the Super Bowl pregame show to promote our first show. And I thought it might be fun to share it tonight. I'd been working at Comedy Central for six or seven years, and when I moved to network television, we made this, uh, what turns out to be a fascinating time capsule of the year 2003, as I said goodbye to cable. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. My new talk show debuts live tonight on ABC. I'm ready to make the move to network, but before I go, I've got to say goodbye to cable. Michael Jordan makes a huge decision. And Tiger Woods, knee surgery. Goodbye, sir. Sports Center. Oh, bye, Red. Bye, bye. Nice to meet you. Bye. See you. On Thursday, Chief Weapons Inspector Hans Blix said Iraq has failed to provide the weapons information. Called Goodbye, John Stewart. Goodbye, Jimmy Kimmel. We'll miss you. Good luck to you, my friend. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell BattleBots you said bye. <laughs> Wrong. It's got to be a classic uniform, like the Raiders, the black, the Goodbye, silver. Melissa. Oh, bye, Jimmy. Bye, Jimmy. I can't stand it. I'll miss you. Oh, yes. Give such a resolution were ever brought before it. Goodbye, Will Fortune. Bye, Jimmy. Take care. The Secretary General repeated his call. Bernie, what's your favorite? Gypsy. Very good. What's your goodbye inside the actor studio? Hey, does this mean we're canceled? Not right Bye, to History play. Channel. All the humanity that's broken and slaves now. Jimmy Kimmel. Goodbye, WWE. Goodbye. Bye. What's Jimmy Kimmel doing here? Goodbye. Ooh, goodbye. If there's a little war in the bedroom, it might just be about the comforter because goodbye, you can't remember. Bye, Christopher Lowell. Okay. Okay. It should be luxurious enough for her, tailored enough for him. Okay. Remember, you can do it. Because you're the best, best dog in all of the world. Goodbye, Andrew the best dog. Mm -hmm. He ate the like pickle. Oh. Do you understand me about me? He said he doesn't like you because you're an idiot. Goodbye, goodbye, Sopranos. Here you go. What's with the goodbye, Sopranos? I'm What's going to do a talk show on ABC. No, 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 no. You took an oath to cable. What's wrong with cable? Get a hell of a guy. Come on. 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 Come on.